All right, so we're starting today's video off with what is your favorite movie of the year so far? But I'm also asking because based on the IMDb user popularity, the Batman is the most popular film of 2022. Followed by other movies at number two, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, rank number three, Thor Love and Thunder, four, Top Gun Maverick, five, Black Panther Wakanda Forever, number six, The Northman, seven, The Grey Man, eight, Everything Everywhere All at Once, nine, Death on the Nile, and ten, X. So I'll give you a wild guess what, what my favorite movie is on that list and I have to say maybe I agree with IMDb's user popularity there but if you disagree let me know what is your favorite movie of the year and also before we get into today's first most popular story that we have to talk about there is another Batman thing I think a lot of you would appreciate here we have artist Dustin Lee Macy recreating the iconic image for Batman the animated series with Robert Pattinson's Batman so since that is the most popular movie according to IMDb's user ratings and whatnot hey here's a cool animated series pose from Robert Pattinson. I actually really do love this. And also don't forget that if you're a fan of the Ridley Year One prequel comic, we do have issue two coming out December 27th. I've done a breakdown on issue number one. We go quite deep into it. Just know that I'll be breaking down issue number two. Here's a cool variant cover by Kent Williams. Also teeny, teeny, tiny tidbit update on the Penguin series. Colin Farrell gave an update on it in Variety's Actors on Actors saying, I hope I'm gonna do it in February or March. So the whole January thing was a little bit inaccurate or maybe that was accurate once upon a time as to when they were going to start shooting at the beginning of 2023 but now it's kind of bleeding into March maybe even February if we're lucky to get a start on that production for the eight episode limited series The Penguin. Can't wait for that. Just thought I'd chuck that out there but let's now finally get into Patty Jenkins responds. And if you don't know what I mean by responds, well, maybe you haven't watched the past two news roundup videos. Essentially, there was a lot of stuff coming out from The Hollywood Reporter, then Deadline, then other places, even claiming that Patty Jenkins sent Michael DeLuca and Pam Abdi a Wikipedia article link on top of saying you don't know stories, you don't know character arcs, to the link of the definition of what a character arc is. All that drama was spewing because essentially her Wonder Woman 3 movie was somewhat canned, or at least the incarnation that it was that she pitched with her treatment for the movie. That was not exactly according to the vision from Michael DeLuca and Pam Abdi. This is kind of before James Gunn and Peter Safran came in, although when they did come in, they apparently in report agreed with the take on Patty Jenkins' script. So I'm going to read out a majority of what Patty Jenkins had to say about this on Twitter, and we also have James Gunn replying to this, and I'm just going to give my thoughts in there. I don't think I need to read out the very, very bottom stuff, because she praises Gal Gadot and, you know, Wonder Woman, what she stands for and everything, but initially she goes on to say, Sigh. I'm not the one to talk about private career matters, but I will not allow inaccuracies to continue. Here are the facts. I originally left Rogue Squadron after a long and productive development process when it became clear it couldn't happen soon enough and I did not want to delay Wonder Woman 3 any further. When I did, Lucasfilm asked me to consider coming back to Rogue Squadron after Wonder Woman 3, which I was honored to do, so I agreed. They made a new deal with me. In fact, I am still on it and that project has been in active development ever since. I don't know if it will happen or not. We never do until the development process is complete, but I look forward to its potential ahead. That's something I totally forgot to tease at the beginning of this video. Rogue Squadron. A lot of us are Star Wars fans here. We did have that announcement a while ago with Patty Jenkins roller skate around in this announcement video saying you know my dad was a pilot and you know this isn't someone inspired her essentially there was absolutely nothing about it more or less up until recent times but she's claiming that rogue squadron is still in early development obviously you don't know if that development's going to yield great results to then green light a production but she's still saying like it's got a potential ahead and that she's still on it in early development and we're just going to have to wait and see but it isn't completely in the garbage can. So that's interesting to know. Let me know if you are excited for a Rogue Squadron movie, but also a Rogue Squadron movie directed by Patty Jenkins. But anyway, this is where we get into the Wonder Woman 3 stuff. So when there started being backlash about Wonder Woman 3 not happening, the attractive clickbait false story that it was me that killed it or walked away started to spread. Now, she's not denying that Wonder Woman 3 in its current incarnation, the way she penned it, I just wanted to interject here on this, is false or anything. Like, so it does seem that that is true. Like, Wonder Woman 3, and this makes sense with everything 
everything going on in the DC universe right now is currently, you know, I don't know if I would say dead, dead, because according to other reports and whatnot, Gal Gadot could continue on it, which might not be with Patty. But essentially here, she's talking about the whole wider story, the details that were coming out about how she walked away from it. She's saying this is simply not true. I never walked away. I was open to considering anything asked of me. It was my understanding there was nothing I could do to move anything forward at this time. DC is obviously buried in changes they are having to make, so I understand these decisions. I do not want what has been a beautiful journey with Wonder Woman to land on negative note. I have loved and been so honored to be the person who got to make these last two Wonder Woman films. She is an incredible character. Living in and around her values makes one a better person every day. I wish her and her legacy an amazing future ahead with or without me. So the, the thing is, she's saying there's a lot of inaccuracies and I'm not calling Patty Jenkins a liar here. But what I do wonder is, at the end of the day, there is some truth to some of the reports. Like, she's unsure if Wonder Woman 3 is going to go on without her, you know, with or without me. I wish it a great future. So I'm guessing that the fact that she penned a treatment for Wonder Woman 3, co-written by Jeff Johns to Michael DeLuca and Pam Abdi at Warner Brothers Discovery at the time. It was said that they didn't like it, and in its current incarnation as of then, it was kind of completely halted. You know, they even apparently gave her the opportunity to rewrite it, but that's when all the drama stories came out, or what she's calling inaccuracies, with how she reacted, you know, apparently saying that they don't know what character development is, they don't know uh, this, that, and the other. Again, coming down to that Wikipedia article link on what character arcs even means. So even though the latter of those uh, gossipy drama details might not be true, it does seem that they kind of turned down a Wonder Woman script. Even though she apparently in those reports walked away after all of this, she's now saying I never walked away. I was open to considering anything asked, asked of me. It was my understanding there was nothing I could do to move anything forward at the time. It is a bit weird. Now I wouldn't expect her to be like, yes, I actually did disagree. I was insistent in my vision. I did like my script, so I debated this in a healthy manner. Uh, maybe she could have got into that if those rumors were true, but she's not saying any of that. It, she's making it sound like I never walked away. You know, it, it actually maybe wasn't to do with my vision. It was my understanding there was nothing I could do to move forward because DC is obviously buried in changes that they're having to make. But She's saying, like, because of all these changes, Peter Safran, James Gunn, the direction, it's kind of all down to that. I, to my understanding, there's nothing more I could really do with Wonder Woman 3 right now. Yes, she also acknowledges, I wish her an amazing future, Wonder Woman that is, with or without me. I feel like there is a bit of reading in between the lines there that no matter what she did pen a treatment, they weren't fully on board with it. And then, yeah, maybe there was nothing she could do to move anything forward at this time because of all of the changes that are going forward in the DC Universe. Maybe they do keep Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman on, but the story that Patty and Jeff Johns had in mind probably doesn't fit in with that James Gunn, Peter Safran vision. But I am very intrigued to know if there was any any modicum of truth to those other details that she doesn't really address here. Because there are, as I keep mentioning, some aspects that are true, such as her penning the story, delivering it, you know, somewhere in there, they turned it down in some way. But as for the other details, we can't know if those sources claiming some of the more dramatic side, you know, whether that's true or not. So I'd love to know your thoughts. Obviously with this, I understand why she felt the need to respond because if I was her, and if there wasn't any truth to this, or even if there was some slither of healthy debate that maybe some sources got a wind of, and then they just kind of completely changed it to be something a bit more, I don't know, dramatic with, oh, well, I, apparently I walked away, apparently I sent a Wikipedia article. Um, even if I fought for my vision, they're making it sound like I said, oh, you don't know this about characters, you don't know that about it, you know, so then I would feel like a need to put this out. But I do feel like there's maybe a bit more to it, but with these things getting public, especially if a director or the people the very people involved. It's just like James Gunn, right, responding to the Hollywood Reporter's articles about his plans for DC. It's a very generalized statement, and it's a similar thing with Patty Jenkins here. Now, James Gunn did directly reply to this, backing up that it was not more of a dramatic thing. I guess you can read that into what he says here. So I can attest that all of Peter and my interactions with you were only pleasant and professional. So that's a bit of a response to all of the claims of, I guess, the Wikipedia link and all of the other little spice to the story. James is kind of backing that up saying, well, 
our, our interactions with you, even though Michael DeLuca and Pamela Abdi were the ones to apparently initially say this isn't really the vision. And then when James Gunn and Pierce Saffron came in, apparently they saw the notes and they concurred. Well, James is saying, well, our interactions were professional and pleasant, so... Just wanted to put that out there. But for now, that's the only update we have. Patty Jenkins responding to it, talking about the future with or without her. Again, right now, it's not concretely known if Snyderverse characters or castings, if you will, like Gal Gadot, will continue on. It does seem perhaps likely that she could, but the same question is up in the air with Henry Cavill. Or are they doing more of a harder reboot versus that of a softer reboot? I do struggle to believe the full hard reboot aspect of it because I'm pretty damn confident that James Gunn's own Peacemaker with the casting of John Cena will be involved in his new DC Universe. You know, we've got season two. I doubt that's going to be set before this whole DC Universe change. So if John Cena still stays in the role of Peacemaker and that's in the canon of this new eight to ten year plan then that would be a legacy casting so again what, what what about the other legacy castings that's the question on all of our minds right now all right so the second story today blue beetle Warner brothers has released a little bit of a synopsis for it then apparently there's been a little bit of a test screening and we're going to get into some of the details about how that was received so initially the synopsis for Blue Beetle is as follows. Recent college graduate Jaime Reyes, Sholo Maldueña, returns home full of aspirations for his future, only to find that home is not quite as he left it. As he searches to find his purpose in the world, fate intervenes when Jaime unexpectedly finds himself in possession of an ancient relic of alien biotechnology, the Scarab. When the Scarab suddenly chooses Jaime to be a symbiotic host, he is bestowed with an incredible suit of armor, capable of extraordinary and unpredictable powers forever changing his his destiny as he becomes the superhero Blue Beetle. Now that synopsis couldn't really sound like more of a straight up origin story for Blue Beetle and the origin story of a movie, but that's what it is, right? And it sounds great. I I'm really looking forward to this movie. It just sounds like it's got a, a breath of fresh life, even though fans were worried about its state because of what happened to Batgirl. Both were actually originally HBO Max exclusive movies, but then Blue Beetle got a boost up to theatrical, but Batgirl never had that theatrical approach to it. So the interesting thing is apparently as of last night there was another test screening and it was received very well and that other superheroes are mentioned but have no appearances. Uh, that's completely expected to me. Now I take the next details and these are not really spoilery by the way it's just very 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 light details on some aspects of the test screening. So take this with a grain of salt regardless, but again, extremely positive reaction. Apparently Jaime Reyes is 22 years old and has graduated from Gotham University. So the same one to where Cyborg went, but also Superman, Supergirl and The Flash are those superheroes who have references. Now, if we have a Supergirl reference, that means this would be taking place after the Flash movie, given that Supergirl is introduced in the Flash movie. Right now, I don't think it has a firm release date. I think the poster just says 2023, and we know that the Flash is coming out in June. So you have to think that Blue Beetle will be coming out, I don't know, not July, but likely August, September, sometime around there. And given that this is after the Flash movie, once again, it's a movie from that of the old regime. So I don't expect, despite they've got to acknowledge Supergirl, Superman, the Flash, but obviously they won't appear. I don't think this will still, just like my thoughts on the end of the Flash movie, I don't think it's going to give us a glimpse of what Peter Safran or James Gunn's next 8-10 to ten year plan will be. These are movies that are from the old regime. Sure, they can maybe insert a cameo, like apparently they have with the Flash, to bring in Henry Cavill for a very, very, very short appearance just to maybe make it known if if they're going to continue on with him apparently they're debating if they should keep that scene in or not so with this again a script and it being shot under the old plan don't look to blue beetle being like ah oh, you know this is you know a, where we're gonna go with james gunn not that it's really gonna address so much the outer world of the dc eu or the now dc universe because it's an origin story for jaime reyes's blue beetle the way i see it is that you know james gunn and pierce saffran are letting these movies released i mean you've not only got blue beetle and the flash movie but you've got shazam fury of the gods aquaman 2 
and I think they're just releasing it. And then after all of that, that's when you're going to feel the ripple effect eventually with that of the plan of James Gunn and Peter Safran. Although I am very confident we will hear verbally from James Gunn what these plans are before or around the time these movies are releasing. It's just cinematically and in universe and on screen when the movies are rolling in your theater, I wouldn't expect reveals and large connections. Even, even with the Flash movie, I keep saying this because it's a movie from the old regime. Keaton isn't carrying on in that canned solo Batman movie, Batman Beyond. He's not carrying on in Batgirl, canned. Uh, so you get the idea. I don't think there's gonna be any major signals for their new DC universe. But are you excited for Blue Beetle? What do you think of that synopsis? What do you think of it all in general? Let me know. Now for the last couple of stories, we have some Marvel updates. Now of course I had to address the Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse trailer. Doesn't that just look fantastic? Like what the heck? is going on. Let's read out the synopsis for the movie and then get into just a little bit of the trailer. So Miles Morales returns for the next chapter of the Oscar winning Spider-Verse saga. Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse after reuniting with Gwen Stacy, Brooklyn's full-time friendly neighborhood Spider-Man is catapulted across the multiverse where he encounters a team of spider people charged with protecting its very existence. But when the heroes clash on how to handle a new threat, Miles finds himself pitted against the other spiders and must redefine what it means to be a hero so he can save the people he loves most. And that's what the trailer gave us, right? All of these other spider men, if you will, are just and women are going after him like crazy. And, and again, with the synopsis, it gives you a clue that when he encounters them, they clash on how to handle a new threat. So I guess there's something that Miles knows that his way is the right way. But the other spider men just almost villainize him in a manner of speaking if they're going to this extent to go after him as we see in this trailer and fans are spotting all kinds of different versions of spider-man out there from spider-man unlimited we have daniel kaluuya who is confirmed to be voicing spider-punk not only that we have oscar isaac voicing spider-man 2099 we have spider-woman voiced by Issa ray spider-man ps4 even popping up in there i think some people have spotted tom holland spider-man i think some are claiming the ps1 spider-man we have the manga verse Spider-Man and all kinds. I mean, obviously all kinds of Spider-Men and ladies out there. And uh, it just looks crazy. I think Spider-Man fans are going to absolutely geek out with the amount of iterations of this character there are. And what I'm most intrigued to know what it is that Miles thinks that he believes he can do better to the point of causing all of the other iterations of the character to completely go after him. And we can't forget about Peter B. Parker as well. He seems to come down with a almost a little baby carrier there. So that is very wholesome if that is the case. Now, when you actually look and when he's going upside down, that thing looks empty. Maybe they cut it out and there is a little bubba in there, but at the same time, maybe it is. It's just so far down in the little carrier. I don't know, but really can't wait for this. Looking forward to it. So let me know what you guys thought of this and maybe any other characters that you've identified in the trailer. And lastly, we have some Deadpool 3 updates. Now this is coming from Collider in where we get a few more details on the vibe of the movie. Now that obviously some fans were concerned about Deadpool maintaining its Deadpoolness from Disney, of course, and also perhaps a little teaser at the release date. So some fans might still wonder if Marvel Studios will really release a superhero movie that's not rated PG-13. Still, from Levy's words, we can be sure that the film he's developing with Reynolds and screenwriters Rhett Reese and Paul Wernick is very adult-oriented. As Levy puts it, we are writing, rewriting, developing, prepping Deadpool every day now. It is such a blast to laugh every day. It is so delicious to hear and write and come up with these scenes where people are just talking foul and the violence is in your face and hardcore and it's very much a Deadpool movie and it has Logan in it and it has Wolverine in it it's too fun I'm having so much fun and I haven't even hit the shooting floor yet I have to say developing a Deadpool movie is one of the most fun creative experiences of my life because it's not just that it's rated R it's that it's so filled with self-awareness and that makes in writing very very fun in a way that is unique to that franchise. Now Collider go on to say one of the things people are curious about is when the Deadpool sequel will start filming, especially with the November 8th 2024 release date fast approaching. Weintraub heard Deadpool 3 was going to start filming in May and asked Levy about it. He replied, 
on or about. Yep, the truth is the more digitally CG heavy a movie is, the longer time you need in post, but obviously it's the first Deadpool movie in the MCU. There's going to be no lack of visual effects, but it's also a North Star priority for Ryan and I to keep Deadpool raw, gritty, grounded in the ways that those movies have been and that all of us love. Now my thoughts on this, I am feeling fairly comfortable in how reassuring that was. I know this is again in the MCU, but I think they understand that if they were to completely even step it down uh, just a notch or two uh, in terms of violence and just, you know, the dialogue and, and everything that we've seen in Deadpool 1 and 2, people were going to be pissed. They, they, they won't forgive that. Sure, it could still be entertaining, but you would have a reckoning there. So the fact that I hear things like the violence is in your face and hardcore, it's very much a Deadpool movie, it talks about Logan, Wolverine in it, and God, can you imagine like the, the violence and R rating of the previous Deadpools, but with Hugh Jackman coming back in as well? As of when the shooting starts and when he says, you know, on or about May, hopefully we get some set photos of Hugh Jackman and Ryan Reynolds together. We'll be covering that on the channel as of when we do, of course. But let me know what you think of this. Does this reassure you? I know some fans were kind of okay with it anyway, hearing that Deadpool wouldn't change, but now we've had it doubled down by Sean Levy. So I think that more or less wraps up today's little news roundup video. I call it little, but really it's probably been going on for a while now. Let me know your thoughts on each story from Patty Jenkins, her response, Blue Beetle, all kinds of other things I'm forgetting about right now into the Spider-Verse. Of course, the Deadpool stuff. And yeah, what about the Batman stuff right at the beginning? If you've enjoyed this video, do consider leaving your support through the form of a like. Maybe consider subscribing if you find yourself coming back to this channel for more videos just like this. But I'm going to leave the floor open to you guys. Looking forward to reading each and every one of your comments. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a lovely rest of your day. And I'll see you people of the DC Universe and MCU in the next video. Goodbye.